let's take a band reject filter, turn it into a peak filter, and try it out on some audio to see a couple of things it can do. A band stop or reject filter will attenuate a certain range of frequencies while passing others above and below. And if it's a high Q filter, like a notch filter, it will have a very narrow stop band. So you can cut out a very specific range of frequencies, like AC power line noise in your audio circuits. If a band stop filter has a lower Q with a wider pass band, it can be used in audio circuits to contour the sound by trying to remove any unwanted frequencies, like maybe taking out the mid-range in guitar amplifiers. The topology we're going to look at today is a bridged T filter. So we have a T with a couple of resistors and capacitor, and that is bridged with another capacitor. All we want to do in this experiment is just get it up and running and figure out how to calculate values for certain frequencies. So we're not going to worry about deriving the equation, and we're not going to worry about calculating for a certain Q, which is the center frequency divided by the pass band, because this type of filter network inherently has a wider pass band, which is what we want for audio. So we just need to calculate a certain center frequency based on the equation 1 over 2 pi times square root of R1 times R2 times C1 times C2. And if we make both resistors the same value, it becomes 1 over 2 pi R square root C1 C2. It works out that if we make both resistors the same value and we use a ganged potentiometer, we can keep both capacitors at a fixed calculated value. And as we adjust the potentiometer, this center frequency will sweep up and down within the limits of the component values. So we can adjust the pot and have this cut out different parts of the audio signal. I put the bandstop filter network in LT Spice, and since I have a 10k dual ganked potentiometer available, I set both resistors to 10k, and I wanted to use standard capacitors that I have on hand, and just playing around with the ratios, I wanted C2 to be larger than C1, just to give me this overall response curve. So plugging these values into the calculator to check what the center frequency here would be, when the pot is at the maximum resistance, our frequency is 1 over 2 pi 10k square root of 47 nano times 1 micro, which is 73 hertz. So when these pots are adjusted all the way to one side at maximum resistance, if we put a cursor on this simulation and go down to the actual notch depth, it's 73 hertz. So we'll be removing low frequencies. Now let's say we adjust the pot so that it's almost all the way to the other side. It's only 50 ohms now. The notch should be up near 14.7 kilohertz. So I make both resistors 50 ohms in the simulation, and now the notch is up around 14.6 kilohertz. So this means as we adjust the pot from minimum to maximum, we can adjust what frequency range we are pulling out of the audio signal from almost down to nothing all the way up to the extremes of what many people can hear. But for this little project, I don't actually want a notch, I want a peak that I can move back and forth. And then if I have audio playing, I can create a similar effect to a wah-wah guitar pedal, where the pedal sweeps this peak along the frequency as you move your foot and change a potentiometer. And so that gives you the Jimi Hendrix kind of guitar sound, similar to this. And if that same sweeping peak effect is used on certain kinds of electronic music, you can hear that effect where, as they slowly change the peak up and down, it sounds like a certain portion of the audio frequency is getting more hollow. So voices or certain drum sounds will start fading in or out, sounding hollow or thin. So we'll try to demo that. But first we need a circuit configuration that will convert this into a peak instead of a notch. And we can do that by taking this exact circuit and put it in the negative feedback loop of an op amp, and then we can feed our audio into the non-inverting input. And with the same component values, we get the exact inversion of this response characteristic. 
So now when the pot is all the way to one side at 10k, when we put the cursor on this peak, we get a boost around 73 hertz. And if we put these down to 50 ohms to simulate the pot being practically all the way to the other end, the peak is 14.6 kilohertz. And when you move this back and forth, you create that wah-wah effect. And if you do it slowly with electronic music, you get that weird hollowing effect. So now I have the pot set at 10k again, and I'm doing two simulations here side by side. And in this simulation, I have a sine wave coming in, and when I zoom in on the sine wave, they practically are the same amplitude and same phase. They're on top of each other, because at 10 kilohertz, we're practically back at zero phase shift, and we're not boosting anything. So the input and output should be at the same level and same alignment. But now let's put in 100 hertz, which is going to be close to this 73 hertz peak. Cyan is the input sine wave, and green is the output, which is greatly boosted as the filter shows. And when we put the cursor about 100 hertz, the phase shift should be minus 48 degrees. So these sine waves are not lining up because of that phase shift. So to put that into perspective, let's look at a real demo of a sine wave. What happens to the sine wave as we move the potentiometer? Here's the op amp filter on the breadboard, potentiometer here. I'm getting plus and minus around 8 volts from this breadboard buddy, and I'm using it as an audio amplifier. There's another circuit happening right here, but it's not part of this experiment. The output of the amplifier on this board goes to this speaker. There's YouTube-friendly MP3s on here a test sine wave here for when it's needed so we can hear it while playing with the filter potentiometer and see it on the oscilloscope as well. And now instead of a test sine wave, let's try some music and then move this peak up and down slowly and quickly and see what kind of impact that has on music. <laughs> That's one way to use filters to change the characteristics of audio signals and can add a whole new dimension to music, whether it's applied to a specific instrument or an entire song with everything together. This is bound to find its way into some future projects I do, so if you're interested in that sort of thing, consider subscribing for future updates. If you like this content and you want to see more like this, give this video a thumbs up. See you on the next project.